Hello, warm welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to start a new career mode on FIFA 22. Uh, as you can see, we've gone with Sheffield United, uh, currently mid-table in the championship with a relatively ageing squad, but I feel like there's a lot of potential in this side, uh, not to mention their rich history. They also have a Royal Stadium in Bramall Lane, which is great for career mode to have that immersive experience. They've also got loads of face scans. Uh, I will be playing this on ultimate difficulty and let's get straight into the squad. At uh, first, we will just reject the tournaments. I don't think we actually need the uh, additional transfer funds. I think we've got enough in the bank and maybe with the sale of a few players, we can get a few few more in. But let's go. Warm welcome to you all. Without further delay, we are pleased to introduce your new manager. Diving straight into the team then, straight off the bat you can see a lot of players have uh, reached a potential. A lot of them are coming up to 30 or in their 30s. Fodringham is one example of that, so we'll need to bring in a goalkeeper at some point in the near future. Uh, Osborne at left back, who can play anywhere, he's really versatile, he can even play central midfield. And then Norrington Davis, who's very young as well. Bogle is one of the stars of the team, he's only 21 and already very solid. Uh, we've got Koulibaly who's out on loan who looks like a great player that could potentially come in. Again, you can see on the video a lot of these players are uh, in the, like sort of in their 30s. Guediora is 35, has been around for absolutely ages. We've then got uh, forward players that look quite exciting. We've got Endai, I believe that's how it's pronounced. He's 21, he looks pretty decent, can play, uh, play straight in that number nine slot or in attack midfield. We've got Gibbs White on loan. From Wolves, he also looks very decent. Might make him a permanent signing, depending on how he goes in the season. We do have a lot of centre forwards, though. We've got David McGoldrick and Billy Sharp, two of the more experienced players in the team. Billy Sharp is uh, just actually at the time of recording become the uh, top goal scorer in Championship history. So he'll definitely be someone we'll, we'll look to play until he retires, especially as he's captain of the of the team. We've also got Ollie McBurney. Ollie McBurney and Lee Smooset uh, up front. So we might look to offload a couple of those. Uh, we'll see what happens in this transfer window and see what sort of offers we get. Taking a look at the board objectives then. Uh, so youth development, it looks like we need to sign a couple of young players, which is obviously something we're gonna be doing anyway, uh, given the age of a lot of the players in the squad. Uh, brand exposure, we need to sign one player of different nationality of the club. Again, that shouldn't be too hard. A continental excess, obviously, there's not going to be no, no objectives there, uh, not in Europe, which obviously we want to be soon, but not, not obviously yet. I think the primary objective of season one is going to be to win the championship, uh, so that will hopefully sort that domestic success goal out. Uh, reaching the round of 16 in the FA Cup is going to be something that's pretty tough to, to take on, but we'll do our best. And then the financial goal of uh, reducing the player wages, which again, I think I think might be uh, possible given that, that we're going to be signing younger players and therefore probably be lower overalls than the ones that we'll be offloading. So we'll see how we'll do on these. Uh, but then let's move on. So Sheffield United's formation when I started this career mode was five at the back. I've decided to move that to four at the back based on the, the personnel we have in the squad already. We've got uh, four great defenders. We've got two good wing backs two strong centre-backs with a few on reserves as well. We've got some really good central midfielders in the team and we've got quite a few strikers, so that's why I've decided to go with two up front. I feel like this formation, uh, based on what players we have, is just sort of perfect. Uh, and we will look to bring in some players, potentially a striker and some more players in the squad depth. But I think for the large part, we've actually got quite a decent team on our hands. So the reason I think we should get another striker, I just uh, sort of listened to that back and after saying we've got so many strikers and then saying we might bring another one in. The reason for that, I think we've got, uh, even though we have got a few, a lot of them are, are sort of 30 plus years old. Uh, we probably won't get many more years out of them. And there's also not sort of a high quality striker in the ranks. We've got a few sort of hovering around the 70 rated mark. So I think we'll look to offload a few and bring in potentially a pretty decent striker to, to partner up Billy Sharp up front. As you can see in the background, we're just now uh, looking to loan some of the youngsters out that we're looking to keep um, potentially for the future. And I think we'll use some of the other players that we'll look to offload in potential swap deals. I think that's uh, quite a good way to, to get rid of them quickly rather than waiting for a transfer offer to come in from another club. Uh, so next thing we'll do is get into the shortlist. 
So I've gone ahead and uh, done this off camera, but I've gone and searched for a load of youngsters uh, with quite a good potential that we could bring in, potentially in this transfer window, and uh, especially if we go up to the Premier League. A lot of these um, are affordable now, but some of them will be a bit more expensive. So that'd be something we could look at uh, and monitor for the time being uh, and bring them in when we've got a bit more of a budget. I think Trafford, the goalkeeper, looks like someone we could bring in, uh, maybe train up whilst we've got Fodringham in goal this season and maybe next season. And then uh, hopefully if Trafford is a, a good rating, we can sort of uh, train him up and get him into that first team. Uh, there are a few on here that are loaned out uh, at other clubs. For example, Saar, he's not actually playing for Spurs at the moment, but it could be someone we bring in again uh, if we do get promoted because he'll have a bit more of a price range to him. Raskin also looks pretty good from standard Liège, a young, a young central midfielder that could we could bring in uh, and uh, bolster that squad depth. I am really interested in Brereton Diaz. He's been great in real life. Uh, I don't know uh, if this one would be possible. It would be a bit more of an expensive signing, but that would be someone that would be great to partner Billy Sharp up front and Brereton Diaz eventually become the number nine and be the main man up front. We've got a few other young strikers on there. Um, but Brereton Diaz is definitely someone I'm tempted by. Uh, Justin Che as well, that right back from FC Dallas. I think he'll be uh, a good player to to, um, to bolster that right back position. We've got a couple of players there, so it'll see if we do get any offers. Um, but I think that's uh, quite a good list for now. I've also gone and completed all the training drills off camera. Um, it's something that's pretty boring to watch, so... Uh, I've not included that in the video, but there did I did come across this glitch where it just wouldn't complete. I got the right amount of points and it just would not complete. Uh, so I thought that was pretty funny, but pretty annoying. Um, but yeah, like I say, completed all the tasks. Uh, we'll move on now. We've got a transfer offer for O'Connell. So O'Connell is one of those players that is in our first team. He's a very strong striker. And you can see here by the, the transfer price of it, quite surprised that we got seven million offered for him uh, i was quite tempted he's only worth five and a half so i decided to have a quick look through the squad to see what sort of players we had and then i had another look at the shortlist so i got a couple of players that um i went through and shortlisted in kelly and cabango kelly from bournemouth cabango from swansea um just to see uh, if we did get a, a decent offer for him um what sort of players we could bring in and i thought after that i was actually happy with with those players on the shortlist so i decided to go in into the negotiations and uh, see what basic task could offer and as you can see they they i offered 8.5 million they they bit my hand off so i don't know if i'm making a mistake there but i've decided to go ahead with it and um and look to bring in one of the younger players that have a decent rating from either bournemouth or swansea we also get an offer for Chris Basham there. Um, I don't really want to off keep offloading players, so I think we'll end up keeping him, even though he's one of the oldest players in the squad. But again, I did consider it. Um, but, but yeah, I don't think that's the right move for now. We've also got all the scout reports back. Uh, Trafford is pretty low rated, but again, I think with a whole year of training, even two years of training, if he gets up to about 70 rated and he's still very young goalie, he'll be a very good player that we could... Uh, put into that first team so I do, do decide to go ahead with an offer for Trafford and I've offered Eastwood and they've they've basically uh, accepted a straight swap I've only had to put in about uh, 80 grand extra so that's pretty cheap transfer there um, I've also got him on next to nothing on wages so I feel like that's a win-win scenario even if he's not a, a particularly great goalkeeper I can always offload him and almost certainly make a profit he's costing next to nothing in wages so I feel like that's a, that's a pretty good transfer there so there we have it, O'Connell sold uh, confirmation. So we've got a big transfer budget now of around £17 million and a good wage budget as well. So we do have scope for bringing in a good couple of players and some really decent ones at that. So after the sale of O'Connell, I wasn't sure on who to sign. Uh, Van de Ven was a very solid option, but I decided to go with Lloyd Kelly. I think his rating is already pretty good. He's very young. Um, I feel like he would just be the perfect match for our team and what we're looking for. So I decided to go with him, uh, go straight into negotiations. And I was really not sure on who, what to, to do, whether to meet a sort of current valuation of 4.2 million. But I think they'd want about five or six million. And I didn't really want to spend that, spend that much money on one player. 
So I decided to look at other options, look at potential swap deals, and I see Jack Robinson there. I chuck him into the deal, he's two million pounds, and I offer 2.2 on top of that to meet their valuation. They want just over three million and a, set, a beefy sell-on clause, which I'm not really happy with. So we drop that down to three million, take the sell-on clause off, and they decide to accept that, which I think is a great, a great deal for us. He's not on massive wages. We've definitely got the budget for that. Five-year contract length, um, twenty thousand pounds a week, and it's as easy as that. We've got a new centre back, and it's a great one for us to to sign there. So as I said earlier in the video, I want to make some some more signings, some younger signings to build up that squad depth and get some good young players in that could potentially get into our team should we get promoted and a couple of seasons down the line. We just have sort of good good quality throughout the team. I see Lewis Bate from Leeds. He's only 63 rated. I don't think they'll be keen on keeping him. Um, they won't put up too much of a fight, let's put it that way. He's only 18 years old, a good central midfielder that Obviously, we've got uh, three play positions that he could play in, two central midfield positions and a CDM position. Uh, they want, as well, a valuation of about 1.1 million, which, again, I'll look to offload uh, some players, see how they would, whether they would accept it. They don't really want to, so I think i just go ahead with the 1.1 million pounds. Yes, I do. 1.1 million pounds. For a 63 rated, it's pretty steep, but... I think it could be a good long-term investment. He's on next to nothing on wages again. So that's our second signing of the window. We've got, first we've got Lloyd Kelly and now we've got Lewis Bate. Uh, he goes straight to number 19 and uh, it's good squad depth again, building up there. And it's not one of those flashy signings, but it's one that we'll have to, uh, sort of teams do have to make. And uh, I'm, re I'm really happy with that, uh, excuse me, third signing. I forgot about Trafford there. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's uh, looking quite good so far. Um, we're getting rid of some deadwood and bringing in some really good young players. We've met, met one of the youth development tasks, which I said would be something we'll look to do and be pretty easy to do. Um, we haven't met that uh, sign someone from a country different to ours, so we'll, we might look at another player here. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Uh, Brereton Diaz would meet that criteria, so he's definitely someone that's on my watch list. Um, as you can see, a lot of players have already decreased in value. We've got McBurney, who's who's gone down as well. And there we have it. We we go in for a, for a transfer for Brereton Diaz. It's a valuation of £10 million. We've got it in our budget. But I want to offer someone else into the deal to, one, bring it down, and two, bring off that debt, uh, offload some deadwood. McBurney's the £2.3 million. He's only 25. Mousse is £1.9 million. He's a bit older. Um, so I'm not really sure on who to go with there. I want to keep McGoldrick, I want to keep Sharp. They're, one, they're quite old, um, so they don't really carry evaluation too. They're, they're, they're quite good players um, to keep hold of, and I know a lot of Sheffield United fans are quite keen and fond of them, especially Billy Sharp. He's he's considered a sort of fan favourite there, so I definitely don't want to get rid of him. So I'm really I'm in an R in about this, but I decide to chuck in McBurney and an £8 million offer and they accept it which I was completely surprised by um, I really didn't think they would accept that for Brereton Diaz I could probably have got him cheaper there but I thought £8 million in McBurney what, what a deal um, don't want a release clause he's not on massive wages but there we have a, a really big signing probably um, the biggest signing of the season and he's number nine, 20, uh, 22 years old, 75 rated. He goes straight into that first team. And that is exactly what I was uh, sort of wanting at the start of the video. A really good quality striker to partner Billy Sharp. We've offloaded one in McBurney. Um, we've got a few young players and we've, we've definitely got um, good squad depth in that striker position. But that's just what we needed. Some A really good quality striker up there. Um Next, we're going to just look through the, the sort of biggest transfers of the window. We've got Asensio going to Liverpool there, Jorginho going to PSG, but on to our club. And it's I am really happy with, the, with those signings. We've got some really good young players, offloaded some of the older ones, loaned out Lopata, which is obviously, hope, he's hopefully someone that will grow um, on that line. But I think we've made some really good, good uh, decisions in this window. Um, final transfer news of this 
this video and it's Ender Stevens we get an offer for him. He's 31 years old. Uh, we don't have another, well, we have Norrington Davis and we've got Lowe out on loan, but I, I was really in two minds whether to, to accept this and I decide to reject it in the end uh, and just not make any rash decisions. We're not gonna try and sign anyone. So we don't really need the money. Um, I think we're ha I'm happy with the squad as it is. So we decide to reject that that offer in the end. Uh, and that brings us to the end of the video. Um, so yeah, we've made some great transfers in this video. We've taken a really good look at the squad we've got. And um, I think we're in a really good position to challenge for the championship title and, and hopefully get to the Premier League within one season, which is obviously the primary objective of this career mode and this save. Um, so next video will be jumping straight into the first game of the championship season, which is against Birmingham City. Uh, hopefully that video will be out within the week. Um, so, so yeah, Birmingham City at home. Hopefully we can get off to a great start, but thank you very much for watching and uh, make sure you subscribe so you, you don't miss the next episode. Uh, thank you very much, Jen. See you later. Bye.